Hi everyone, I'm Mr. Fullerton, and today I want to talk for a few minutes about wave interference. Now, our objective is going to be to apply the principle of superposition to the phenomenon of wave interference. A lot of fancy words for what's really a simple concept. So, superposition itself says that the behavior of multiple waves traveling through the same location at the same time in the same medium is governed by superposition. That is, the total displacement is the sum of all the individual displacements of the waves. Or to put it much more simply, when two waves meet, you add their amplitudes together. As they pass each other, once they've passed each other, they keep going as if they had never met. Really, really simple concept. Easier to show with the sample problem. The diagram shows two pulses approaching each other in a uniform medium, and they're going opposite directions, so they're coming toward each other. Diagram the superposition of the two pulses. Well, when they meet, as they cross over, their amplitudes are going to add. They're going to get bigger, and then they're going to continue on their way. So as they meet, this should look something like that, where if one has a magnitude of 5 centimeters, the other has a magnitude of 10 centimeters, the total magnitude here should be about 15 centimeters when they're added together using the principle of superposition. Now, applying this to wave interference, the interaction of multiple waves following superposition principle is called wave interference. You can have two types. Constructive wave interference occurs when the resulting displacement is greater than the displacement of the original pulses. We just showed an example. We had a 5 centimeter displacement and a 10 centimeter displacement that added together to give us a 15 centimeter displacement. That's constructive interference. Destructive interference is when the resulting displacements negate each other. The resulting displacement, the magnitude of the resulting displacement, is less than the individual displacements. Again, once the pulses pass each other, they continue along their original path, their original amplitudes, as if they had never met. So, a good example of this, you can see a video illustration, video animation of this, on the A Plus Physics site. For those of you watching this on A Plus Physics, if you just click on the link on the bottom, it should take you right to that animation. And if you're watching this on YouTube or somewhere else, you may have to type that into your browser because hyperlinks don't work on YouTube currently. All right, let's take a look at how we can apply this. Here we have two pulses approaching each other from opposite directions in the same medium, a lot like our first sample problem. Sketch the pulses after they have passed through each other. Well, after they've passed through each other, the waves are going to continue as if they'd ever, never met. So we will have the wave that's on the right will be on the left now, and the wave that's on the left will be on the right. This one will continue in the direction it was initially moving. This one will continue in the direction it was initially moving. So they keep moving as if they had never met. Two separate pulses. Here we have a more complicated diagram showing shallow water waves of constant wavelength passing through two small openings, A and B in a barrier. Which statement best describes the interference at point P? Well, we first have to note that crests are shown with a straight line, a complete line, troughs with this dashed line. So at point P here, I can see I have a crest and a trough meeting. I have a crest meeting a trough in the opposite direction. So when those overlap, we've got one up, one down, as they cross each other, they should completely negate. Destructive interference is going to cause a decrease in amplitude. So our correct answer here must be 4. They have opposite displacements, so when they meet, those will negate each other, and we will get a decrease in their overall amplitude. Here's another one. Two waves having the same amplitude and frequency are traveling in the same medium. We'll get the maximum destructive interference when the phase difference between the waves is 0, 90, 180, or 270 degrees. Well, let's draw a wave front here. And remember that if two objects are in phase, that it's the same point on consecutive waves. So if they are 180 degrees out of phase, that could be a point like this, A, and a point like this, B. Those two are 180 degrees out of phase. That would lead to maximum destructive interference. So the correct answer here, we get maximum destructive interference at 180 degrees of phase difference. Hopefully this gets you started with wave interference and superposition. Again, fancy words for a pretty simple principle. 
you have more questions, want more work or practice problems, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks and make it a great day.